Here we have another example. We are looking for the root locus of this closed loop system. We have the, the plant transfer function g of s, and we have a control gain k. The root locus will represent the location of the poles of the closed loop transfer function as k goes from 0 to infinity. And you can do that analysis based on the open loop transfer function. This transfer function has two poles and no zeros. So n minus m equals to 2. We have two asymptotes going to infinity. Those asymptotes can be calculated as 180 plus 360 times q minus 1 divided by n minus m, where q is 1 and 2. So the first of the asymptotes has an angle theta 1 that we determine by setting q to 1. And this is 180 divided by 2. That's 90 degrees. And theta 2 is obtained by setting q equals to 2. And this will give 180 plus 360 divided by 2. That is 270 degrees or negative 90 degrees. We can now determine the centroid of this asymptote. The centroid that we called alpha is the sum of poles minus the sum of zeros divided by n minus m. The poles are 0 and negative 1 divided by 2. This is negative 0 0.5. This is where the asymptotes meet. That's where the centroid of the asymptote is. Now let's place the poles and zeros on the plane. We have a pole at 0 and we have a pole at negative 1. Where is the root locus now? The root locus is to the left of a not number of poles and zeros. So we're starting from positive infinity as we count we have 0 up to here. The count now becomes 1 and when you cross negative 1 the count becomes 2. So the only odd segment is between these two poles. So the root locus exists between them. These two poles now come together and will go to plus minus infinity following the asymptotes that have an angle of 90 and negative 90 degrees. The centroid of that asymptote is negative 0 0.5, so right here. One of the asymptotes has an angle of plus 90 degrees with respect to the real axis, and the other one has an angle of negative 90 degrees or 270 degrees. This means that these two poles will come together at this point and will break away. One goes up, one goes down, one goes to plus infinity, the other one tends to negative infinity. And this is now the root locus of the closed loop transfer function. This represents the location of the poles when you close this feedback loop. And you can see that our system is initially overdamped because all poles are real. The poles will become one here at this point. The system is then critically damped. And as k keeps increasing, they break away from the real axis. The system becomes under damped because you now have complex conjugates as poles and they tend to plus minus infinity. The system is always stable because you're never crossing into the unstable region of the S plane.